Hello everyone, welcome back to Space Basics. In this video, I'm going to discuss docking. Docking, in particular, the Dragon 2 capsule here to the International Space Station. Uh, here we currently have an increasing relative velocity for some reason, uh, so perhaps we should deal with that. So I'm going to turn towards the negative velocity marker and try and stop us from drifting away. But docking to some extent, it's fairly simple, but it takes some practice to especially get efficient. And the first thing is make sure that we are approaching. So I've canceled out the velocity. I'm going to disengage SAS. I'm not going to use uh, MechJeb to help me out here with I often use it for rotation, but I'll just do rotation manually this time. And so we're turning towards the station, and we will approach slowly. We will soon be in daylight, I think, so that will help. So here, I'll stabilize it, turn on SAS to stop our rotation, and press H to move closer. Uh, the way you dock will somewhat depend on how much information you have. Here we have a number of sources of information, and I'll point them all out. Uh, so in some in some games or in real life, you may have a nav ball that has indicators here. Uh, in this case, the pink indicator uh, is towards the target, that circle, and then the yellow one is indicating our current velocity with respect to the target. So this is no longer our orbital velocity. Uh, you'll see it sort of drift, and that is because the orb, our orbit and the orbit of the International Space Station are different. And as those deviations compound, we will drift away, and so our relative inc uh, velocity increases. Closest approach distance uh, is sort of wobbly there. But right now, it'll be 21 minutes until we get within one kilometer. We can speed that up. We can go towards the target more, or we can sort of... Uh, do sideways thrusters to sort of pull this velocity vector side to the side here and you'll see that the closest approach distance is going down now you might not have the closest approach distance in which case uh, the best policy is just to wait the 21 minutes get closer and then see what happens uh, ultimately we have to wait until we're close enough to see the docking port that we want to dock at right now we're a bit too far away from that um, generally speaking, you'll have the distance to the target. The closest approach distance is some is a number that you may not have. In Kerbal Space Program, you can find it uh, by taking a look here. And you can see the separation 0.2 kilometers matches the closest approach distance there. And if we take a look at the part of our orbit here that it will be, well, it gives the time between the our current location and the closest approach distance here. And it says also that when we get there, we will need 2 meters per second in order to cancel out the remaining velocity. So it is important that you do not approach the station so quickly that you have a lot of relative speed, and that would be bad. And right now we only have 0.3 meters per second, but so we will be speeding up relative to the station by the time we get to the closest approach. Generally, I aim for something underneath 200 meters if I have that number, and again, you should have it here. If you don't have that number, uh, there might be more corrections necessary, and you might have to use more RCS in order to figure it out. So anyway, let's move towards it. So I'm time warping here. 200 meters is good for making sure you can target the docking port. But again, make sure you're not approaching too quickly, uh, such that you might crash into the station or something. Okay. So there is the space station. I'm pressing in to slow down or using the thrusters on the top here. And we might as well, uh, in order to make sure that we cancel it all out, I'll just sort of turn towards our velocity vector. And make sure that we've got all of it gone. Okay, that's fairly low, and we're more or less parked well enough. Taking a look at the station, so I've switched vessels here. It looks like that this port is free, and that's the one I want. Still using e-passes, I don't have the adapter that they have these days. So, okay. So, we know that port is free. 
and we're sort of going in the right direction for it. Uh, you need to make sure that you can face the port. What we want to do is make sure that we ultimately get into a location that is directly facing the port somewhere over here so that we can slide in like this. And so whatever maneuvers we need to do to get into that location, uh, we need to do those. Now, you might not be able to switch to the station or get this sort of third person view of the whole deal if you're inside the spacecraft. Uh, this view is not available necessarily, but uh, normally in real life, of course, they have plenty of automated systems and stuff like that and computers telling them where they are and how they need to go. Uh, if you are in a program like, for instance, reentry. Reentry is a very difficult place to do the approach and dockings. That game um, it simulates the Gemini and Apollo spacecraft for the docking stuff and Gemini docks with Agena and the Apollo of course the command module with the lunar module those take extra effort because you don't the third person view isn't as easy to figure out you don't have the closest approach distance and most of the effort is in rendezvous but also docking because of the view is more complicated so the, but the main thing is you can scope out the target and sometimes do a fly around of the target, keeping in mind that your momentum will continue. So you just need a puff in one direction. So for instance, we're going in this direction. As long as we don't hit the station, uh, the main thing is to not hit the station. You can sort of uh, survey the station if necessary to see that everything's okay. If you do have the velocity vector and the target vector, you can just make sure uh, see, we're we're firing these thrusters here. Well, that's towards the station, so maybe um, these will push us away. So, all right, that'll keep us a safe distance away as we approach. But we're actually going pretty slowly right now, so I'll move quicker. I want to get there in like five minutes. But it's good to take your time because trying to go fast will inevitably waste fuel. Having a target in the window obviously is important and identifying where the docking port is. But sometimes that's hard from a very long distance, including in re-entry, as I mentioned, but also in other programs. Now, we do one plane at a time. So first of all, it's the plane that we're headed towards the station in, which is this one. So ma mainly our speed is directed in this direction right now. And we're approaching it like this, you see. Uh, parallel to the station and so when we get to the right spot parallel to the docking port and if your windows are for instance right here which they are uh, actually let's uh, rotate so that we can see how they might be looking at it so they might be looking at it through uh, this window here for instance and dragon itself does automated docking so they they wouldn't need to uh, do manual necessarily, but anyway, looking at it, they'll look and make sure that the, do uh, the docking port looks directly out of the window. And so we continue going in this direction. Uh, we may want to avoid getting any closer uh, on the nav ball in order to make sure you're not getting any closer is just make sure that the velocity vector is right in front of you. So right under this crosshair, then you'll be going straight in this direction. Now again, we're only worrying about one plane at a time, so we're not worrying about the fact that we're off in this direction a little bit. And depending on which window you're using to look at it, you might be off in one direction, but we're doing one direction at a time here. So we're going too slowly. Let's move more in this direction. Line up. Okay. So here we will stop in this direction, cut all the velocity and we are going to turn to do a different axis and you can turn off SAS at this point while turning in order to conserve fuel and what you want to do is be as parallel as possible so we did this axis first being parallel now we're going like this and we want then we've got parallel line parallel try and be parallel here 
to the station and we're going to move up this way. And so we would like our to rotate so that our thrusters that will maneuver us in that direction move or maneuver us in that direction exclusively. So these guys are pushing down like this. Okay, it looks like we're drifting up this way. But then the closest approach distance is going up, so it's confusing a little bit. Let me just time warp. Yeah, I think we're going up. Uh, that's fine. I think that close approach distance is measuring from something else. Sometimes when you get close, you can't uh, trust the closest approach distance uh, when the object is really big. So we're drifting up until we're directly in front of the docking port. And we can tell that by this pink marker here. I mean, it sort of gets level with us. But we might be tilted up or down. It might be a little bit off right now. Okay, and then we kill our velocity. We want to get to relative velocity zero, either here or up there, either way. So whatever RCS thruster direction you need to press in order to get it down to zero. Okay, then we're looking at the docking port and we see we're still sort of off to the side here. So identifying which thrusters will push us in the right direction. It seems like this will be best. And try to make sure our docking port is facing the docking port perfectly. If you've got the docking port facing the docking port perfectly, what we can do is place our velocity vector. This is the opposite. This is the opposite direction that we're going in. If we keep going forward, we can place this vector on the opposite side of the target from where we are. So like this. So our the way we're pointing is here. The way the target is is here, and that is our velocity. But that only works if your your docking port is directly parallel to the opposite docking port. If not, if it, there's a tilt or something, there's an angle, then it'll come out wrong. So if you're doing it visually and you're looking inside the cockpit you, through your window, making sure, of course, that your window is pointed in the direction of the docking port, I guess they must have some camera or something on top here so that they can see through from this angle. Uh, if you've got some sort of view through this angle so you can see directly through the line of the spacecraft docking port, then you just make sure it's flush to the target docking port. That you have to do a lot in, uh, in re-entry with the Gemini or the Apollo. So we proceed, and then as we get closer, we can adjust a little bit. Are we really, really parallel? I mean, it's looking, uh, well, now the target marker is down there, so I'm going to move my velocity marker down, because it seems like we overshot, and we should slow down. Normally for realism overhaul, I approach at 0.2 meters per second. With the space shuttle, it might be even less. In stock Kerbal Space Program, the docking ports have a lot of magnetism. In other words, once you're close, they'll uh, automatically get themselves together. In Realism Overhaul, that is decreased. decreased, And uh, there is some in re-entry, but not a whole lot. So it's all about one axis at a time, one axis of translation at a time. Once you've got two axes done, you can point directly at the uh, directly parallel at the docking port and then do the third axis. The third axis of translation is towards the docking port. So one axis will be going down this way, one axis is up or down this way, and the final one is towards the docking port. So while you're doing the other two, try not to be going towards the docking port. Uh, that might be helpful. And as, as we go along, we readjust based on where the purple target is. And also we might need to, okay, so here I think this docking port and this docking port aren't quite 
parallel with each other. So I'm going to tilt up. You'll see it sort of seemed like it was tilting down. And what about from this angle? Uh, this angle looks all right. Now, in something like re-entry, there will be some guide on the docking port side. There's some sort of crosshairs that you have to line up to make sure that your docking port is facing exactly parallel to the target docking port. And so that's how it is. Uh, as far as the Gemini and Apollo missions, they'll have a visual indicator. And it's possible to get mods that might give you that in Curl Space Program, though eyeballing is not a problem. Uh, the problem is, once we're below 0.1 meter per second, it doesn't like to show the velocity vector at all. So that's one reason to approach at 0.2 instead of 0.1. Uh, okay, well, we'll have magnetism help there. All right, uh, so that is us docked. Now, if you do have MechJeb or some other system that can help you keep parallel to the docking port, for MechJeb, the way we do that, we'll undock and redock again. So let me turn on our CS and push away. And I'm going to go to a completely different angle. Megjeb uh, has its own docking autopilot, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but what, what I can help do with Smart ASS is if we select our target and set, set that as a target. Previously, we didn't have to do that because we had the station targeted and the station, that is its route right now. That is what it's controlling from as well. So we didn't have to bother with uh, setting the docking port in particular as a target. Uh, but what we can do with MechJeb is this parallel negative. A parallel positive would have your docking port face the same direction as that docking port, which is this way. We want to be in the opposite direction. So, and we want to make sure we're controlling from, ah, that's a little bit, we were controlling from the wrong point. Uh, we were controlling from the capsule in particular rather than the docking port. So controlling from the docking port is a good idea. And what it's done is it's turned us so that we are parallel. So we don't have to worry about the parallel thing. If you don't have to worry about the parallel thing, you can just focus on the translation part, which is basically making sure that the velocity vector is on the opposite side of the target vector. So again, like that. And so this is what I normally do when I'm, when I'm docking. I just focus on getting the velocity vector where it needs to be. In stock Kerbal Space Program, you can definitely approach faster, and it's not a problem. So Smart ASS is essentially handling all the rotation, whereas I can do the translation part. And that makes it easier and somewhat more reliable. Fewer corrections involved. In real life, a lot of things dock automated or use the canad arm, which we see here, which basically they get really close and then the arm pulls them into the docking port they need to go to, and the arm is operated by people inside. Uh, some things uh, dock completely automatically, like the Soyuz in Progress uh, and Dragon 2, and, and then some things dock entirely manually, like the Space Shuttle which is sort of impressive when you think about how huge the space shuttle is and the fact that astronauts had to dock it manually. But in any case, there's a range of stuff as far as how things dock. And generally, astronauts are expected to be able to dock in case the system does not work, at least for the things that are crewed. Uh, so there we have it. I don't know if there's any other questions. That's a quick explanation of docking. I mean, it's it's deceptively simple. It just requires practice. Um, do one axis at a time. Focus uh, with the space station. It has obvious planes. There's uh, the plane going like this, a plane going like that, right? 
an obvious, an obvious orientation, and this is towards the docking port in this direction. Uh, if you were docking to a different docking port, let's say uh, this uh, top one here, then you would orient uh, this way and that way, and then the last one will be down this way. So it doesn't matter which of the first two you do first, as long as you do those two before trying to approach any closer. Uh, yep, yeah, and that's about it. I don't know if that's sufficient or not, uh, but ultimately of all the things that uh, are done in space, docking is the one that just flat out needs practice. So needs lots of practice and you get better over time. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.